Hey everyone, Tin Man here, back with some more Dota Underlords. Let's see what we got here. So, we've got some good options here between Axe, Tiny, and even Bounty Hunter. I've been liking because of that Scrappy build. You know what, let's pick up Bounty Hunter early and see if we can see what Scrappies can do for us. Axe is a pretty good choice uh, for, for the round one. I think that, you know, he's a pretty popular choice, he's a pretty good choice, but... I'm also interested in trying the scrappy build that I recently made a guide on, and Bounty Hunter is a good start for that. I don't really think your game's going to be made or lost just on, on your first round pick regardless. So I'm going to pick what I think is most fun. Uh, here we can get Embarrassment of Riches. It's really good on turn one, and it obviously dramatically drops off after that. Other than that, Claymore and Blightstone... Claymore adds a bit more damage early game, but Blightstone adds a bit more damage late game. But in any case, I'm not uh, thrilled about picking up either one. So here I get to pick up a pair. I think Razor's a little bit better of a pair than Drow Ranger. I think Primordials are a bit better in the meta. Hunters are still pretty bad in the current meta. Their their damage output just really, just really isn't what it needs to be. It really relies on Beastmaster and... I guess Lycan to an extent to really get most of their damage. Whereas like just the auto attackers like Drow Ranger, Marana, uh, Wind Ranger are just not that great at the moment. Drow Ranger is really just good for the Heartless buff in that kind of a build. Uh, what do we have here? So Arcane Boots is an item I really like a lot. Provides a lot of mana to units two cells away, but so does Brooch of the Aggressor. I think. Um, I think I like Brooch of the Aggressor a bit more. They're they're both, you know, they fulfill a similar role, but this is a, a lot of mana gain over the course of a fight. Uh, here, nothing that's really appealing. So there's actually like this interesting new mechanic. Well, it's not new mechanic, but it's a, a better understanding of the way the blacklisting effect works that kind of makes me not want to buy anything here. Typically you would just buy, you know, two things, or buy a couple things just to keep your options open. I guess I still will to buy the Witch Doctor and Batrider, but there is like a real consideration there to not buy anything because the way that it, it used to work, or at least we thought it used to work, was if you, I'll pick up Aegis here, I love that item, was if you, would manually reroll, either because you get the free reroll or you'd pay two gold over here. The units that you did not buy in your shop would not show up again. And that's still true. But it's also true that when it manual or when it naturally refreshes every round, like it just did right now, you still um, you still don't get the units that you did not buy. So I'm looking at this shop and I'm saying none of these go towards any strategy that I'm interested in. Right now I'm interested in either like Troll Knights, or perhaps Primordials, or Scrappies. Like, those are kind of the three that my units are currently going towards. And nothing in this pack really leads me towards any of those directions, and really they don't lead me towards any direction. All of them are, except for Wind Ranger, are pretty, pretty poor units. So I'm just not going to buy anything. Whereas typically you would buy like $4 worth, you know, use all your gold because there's no downside to it. There actually is a downside. You won't get to see any of these units in the next pack. So that means that the other two cost units and one cost units are much more likely to show up. Of course, that resets. That only carries over for, for one, one shop offering. It, it resets after that. Uh, but you see here, we didn't see any of those units that we were just mentioning. But we do get to see somebody like Timbersaw, who's a great addition here to give us the Scrappy bonus. So now we've got Scrappy and Troll. And I'll even pick up... Well, I think we can move away from Primordials now. So I'm actually going to sell off these two razors, get us to nine, so that if we win, then we'll manage to, uh, then we'll pick up an extra gold of interest if we do win. And if we don't win, then, then it's not no harm, no harm done really. So I'll pick up the Luna, and if we lose, we can use our free reroll before the end of the fight. But things are looking pretty good right now. Oh, that's a big ogre magi. Never mind. Uh. Yeah, we got it. Oh, that was really close. So that's good. We, we sold off for the extra gold. And uh, and yeah, so we're going to get the bonus interest. 
And typically I would buy these other three, but now that we have a better understanding of how the blacklisting works, it doesn't make sense to buy things that you really don't think are, are gonna have a chance to make it into your build. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this new, I don't know if it's a new discovery or they actually changed it with a recent patch, but I, I'm not the biggest fan of it, just as a, as a gut reaction here. So pick up Batrider and Omni Knight, and I think it might make sense to go up to like three knights here. They all get some nice damage reduction, and I'm gonna kinda offset to the side here. And we still sit at 10 gold, so we definitely get interest. Offset to the side here, so hopefully everybody target, or most opponents are gonna target onto Omni Knight. <clears throat> Witch Doctor doesn't really need uh, the additional protection. I guess we could have moved like Batrider up a step. So he's more likely to stay next to the Omni Knight because Omni Knight just got crushed. Because he had no, no, uh, no knights were standing right next to him. Nah, whatever, we take a couple damage here. But I'm gonna use my free reroll and we get another Omni and Witch Doctor. So now the blacklisting carries over, like Nature's Prophet, Ogre Magi, and Antimage will not show up in the next pack, even though it's gonna be manually refreshed. Or it'll be refreshed just naturally at the start of the round. Um, let's see, nothing, nothing here that really goes towards the knights or I'm holding out onto Scrappies, but looks like there's two other people going that Scrappy build. So maybe not, uh, maybe not the best time to try to invest into that. I'm like one away from a lot of upgrades. I think I'm gonna use my free reroll right now and I don't get any. Cause then I would like buy it and sell off the Scrappies to, to get back up to interest. But I was one away from multiple upgrades. So in that sense, it makes sense to, to use your, uh, typically I like saving my reroll. If, if there's a chance I can you know, get to a higher um, higher level to get better rerolls or I think if you just use them right away you often are like tempted to to buy too many units and then you drop below interest thresholds and it's it's generally not not the greatest to, to use them instantly kind of wait till the last second to use them so that you get a bit more information about what you're looking for or, or what um, what you want so still nothing here towards either strategy there's couple more mages but once again we're one away actually we're one away from a couple upgrades but I'm just gonna sell off these scrappies to get interest and if we lose again we lose but I want to lock in this higher amount of interest and let's take a look around so one other person on Knights right now they've got a Luna 2 Batrider 2 yikes that's a really good build and double helm of the undying it's better than us I don't know if we're gonna win here. I don't think so. I don't think we can beat all of this. Two-star Ogre Magi is particularly strong nowadays. Now that he casts every five seconds, he's got a ton of health. 1600 is a lot of initial health. So we'll use our free reroll now that we lost, pick up the Abaddon, that's always good, and just leave the rest uh, sitting here. So we're in currently in last place, but we've got a losing streak, so we get some bonus gold that way. We've been, you know, stockpiling a good amount of interest. And then we get a bat rider and can throw in another knight. So that's pretty good. And once again, we're just one away from a couple upgrades, so I'll I'll spend the free reroll right now. Find the Omni Knight. There we go, perfect. Uh I don't want to move any items around. Yeah, I still like the Actually I I Kind of wonder between Witch Doctor and Batrider. I've seen some people use Brute of the Aggressor on Batrider just so that he only requires 20 mana. It's pretty low, but he even against like a heavily armored target, he's going to get his ult off every two autos. And that, that really ramps up his damage. At one star, I wasn't too thrilled about it. But now that he's two star, I think I'm a little bit more inclined to give him that mana item. Because I think at one star, the Witch Doctor stun is is perhaps a bit more valuable. But now at two star, Bat Rider is going to be a bit better to hold that that brooch of the aggressor. I think it swings back into Witch Doctor's favor when we get to two star, just because it'll we want to get that out asap. Okay, uh, unfortunately we're not going to get up to thirty gold of interest because it's a creep round and I'm not going to sell off anything. So eh, that'll be all right. 
And we want to pick up Chaos Knight anyway, so that's good. I think Chaos Knight's probably better than just Abaddon, just on his own. He deals a lot more damage. See, higher attack damage plus the, the demon passive. Wait, has he always done 92 damage? That feels a lot higher than I thought I remembered him having. I thought he had 75 damage. Or is that already including the demon passive? I was pretty sure, I thought, maybe I'm just remembering things wrong, but I thought for sure he only dealt 75 damage before at one star. But maybe they're including that, uh, that passive already. So there's a fall from grace. I like that item a lot into knights, particularly good with uh, Dragon Knight and Omni Knight. So I'm gonna pick that up. And that actually encouraged me to put Abaddon back in because now that gives us Heartless between Abaddon and Omni Knight. There's the Witch Doctor. And I think as I was stating before, it might be advantageous to move the, uh, the Brute of the Aggressor back onto, back onto the Witch Doctor just so he gets that stun off really quick because it'll be seven stuns and more damage. And we're just gonna sit here on on our gold. There's no reason to buy things because they get they do get blacklisted for the next round, regardless. So Oh, we're up against the win streak, first place. I think we're really strong, and even though they've got six units, I think we can beat them. I think we do beat them. Yeah, that witch doctor stun was really big. Yeah, we get this. Even that uh, sniper alt couldn't couldn't find its mark. Nice, good solid win here. I do feel I do feel like um, this change to the blacklisting effect. I I don't even know if it's a change. I'm just saying I'm playing it differently. Whether it was just discovered that it was different or if it actually is different, it feels kind of weird to like not be buying the extra units, right? Because it's strictly disadvantageous to buy the extra units because you you now have a chance to get them again. Like I don't want to buy like Stark or Nature's Profit, even like keep myself open to those possibilities because then I might get another one next pack and reduces my odds of finding Abaddons and Omni Knights and Chaos Knights. So overall I'm not super thrilled with it, but I'll keep on seeing how it plays out. I really just discovered that that fact this morning, that that's how that works. So it'll take a little bit of time for me to really understand how that you know, impacts gameplay and what I really feel about it. But early indications are I'm not, uh, I'm not a huge fan. In any case, I'm gonna pump up my gold here to just about level up so we get the higher chance of better units and we can put in the Luna, who's gonna be Probably higher damage than Chaos Knight. Nah, uh, maybe Chaos Knight would be higher damage. Nothing here, and since we're one away from a Chaos Knight upgrade, I'm just gonna use a free reroll. Don't find it, but I do find a Luna. And we'll pick up that Witch Doctor after interest locks in. All right, so quick scouting around. Just the one person we just lost to is is currently a Knights other than us, so looking pretty solid. A couple people on Bloodbound and Barani. That's an interesting combo. I mean, they're not doing too well. They are combined uh, three and 13, but the fact that they're running like the exact same build is really interesting. Oh, this is one of the person we're up against. I feel like we are like multiple of their wins because I think I've lost to the Bloodbound Brawny build once or twice. So we, we might account for a couple of their wins. <laughs> Alright, we definitely want to put a higher priority on equipable items from now on. Uh, no more global items, really, because well, we've got enough global effects, and I'd rather get uh, get some equipment out there on our units. I do stand by that I think all three of these global items are very strong and worthwhile taking. This is a good, this is a good start here, or good round. Get our Chaos Knight and then can pick up these two. On a turn when we didn't get to get up to 50 gold interest anyway. Uh, I think I like this formation. You kind of 
funnel most of the opponents into our tankiest member, the Omni Knight. Actually, I'm going to swap this a little bit. Um, and then Chaos Knight kind of gets to wrap around the side, and he probably doesn't have too many people jumping onto him unless they're stacked in this corner exactly. And then once they get through our front line, they first get on the Bat Rider, who's a little bit uh, more resilient than Luna. You know, it's double the health total. Whereas Luna is pretty weak at one star. So that uh, that worked out pretty well. The tiny toss scared me for a little bit, but we fought through it. Actually, we could even put uh, could even put like a witch doctor off to the side. I guess he's not quite as resilient as the bat rider. Oh, it's the creep round. So we're just gonna flip to the back. It doesn't. This one probably doesn't really matter. I want to buy the Abaddon, obviously, after interest locks in. I don't need it for the creep round. I think we should be fine to beat up on these wolves. But we'll buy that and the Chaos Knight, and we're off to the races to three-star Chaos Knight. Looking around, they... Another person going Knights has a bunch of Lunas, but not really looking at Chaos Knights, so that's pretty good. They don't have any work towards three stars, that is. Three star Chaos Knight's really strong. There's a lot of really good items to put on him between, um, like Battle Fury is really like the best item, but you know even tanky items are really good because he does a lot of baseline damage. So that if you if he gets a lot of tankiness, then he'll just stay alive for longer and and beat him up. All right, so 300, 400. Uh, ooh, Sacred Relic and Vanguard are the two I'm really looking at here because they're both the tier 3. Vanguard's much more defensive. Sacred Relic's pretty good on Luna. We don't have anything for Luna yet. I think I'm a little happier with a Sacred Relic more so than a Vanguard. Especially because we just got a 2-star Luna. I'll say a 3-star. Not quite there yet. And pick up a couple more Knights. So, well on our way to 3-stars on a couple of these. And really powerful board as is. This is a one away from either six knights and one away from two warlocks. So I want to look for another warlock, not Shadow Fiend, obviously. I think Necrophos is the preferred warlock here because it'll give us the Heartless along with Abaddon. And then, of course, Dragon Knight as our sixth knight. But overall, this is looking pretty good. Things are looking good. I think I'm going to pump in gold to get up to level 7. Just increase the odds of finding that Dragon Knight. I don't have anything great to put in right now. Um, I mean, I'll just put in like another Chaos Knight or something like that. Kind of set off to the side here because he's going to be a lot less tanky than my other frontline knights. And maybe he'll pick up an Assassin jumping, or if not, he'll kind of walk around slowly and come into the side of the fight. Or we just pick up the Necrophos. That was easy. <laughs> It's exactly what we wanted for the... Now we have technically three Heartless. Uh, but get the Warlock buff. And I'm actually going to swap these positions. Because Necrophos is a little bit uh, squishier than the Witch Doctor. And if the only way these guys are going to get attacked until we've like lost the fight is an Assassin jumping. So I'd rather the Assassin jump on a Witch Doctor rather than on the Necrophos. Because Witch Doctor is probably tanky enough to survive a couple hits from an Assassin and then cast his ability... And it's on a really long cooldown, so I don't care too much if he dies right after casting his ability. Whereas Necrophos, you wanted to keep him alive for as long as possible, because the longer he stays alive, the more often he can cast. Because it's on a relatively shorter cooldown. Alright, so we got the win there. Looking really strong. Uh, there's still one person who's undefeated, the other Knights player. Whose build? Eh, admittedly, I think we could take him. I think we could take him. Oh, man, getting another Necrophos and another Chaos Knight. We'll wait till interest locks in. Because we don't uh, don't need to buy that right away. And let's take another scout around. So there's still this one person on a Scrappy build. I know we kind of got scared off from that early. Well, we didn't really find too much for it. But since I recently made the guide on Scrappy, let's take a look at their build. So they've got the four Scrappy and they're going for two Demon Hunters, which is not a combination that I really mentioned. Uh, but with the Anti-Mage and Terrorblade is, is pretty interesting. Um, 
I had not personally tried that one, so I'm not entirely sure how it all plays out. But I think it, it has uh, has some potential merit. Oh, no, we can't beat them. Oh, they found Necrophos. They didn't have Necrophos last time I checked. They were playing Drow Ranger. I thought we could have taken this and beat them if they just had Drow Ranger, but they found Necrophos eventually, so they had just a bit more healing than us. And honestly, I think one of the problems was that we that our Necrophos couldn't cast. He couldn't get mana. So it's possible that I need to move this over there. And I forgot to buy the Chaos Knight. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> great. Uh, yeah, I think I'll use our free reroll. Since we're one away from an upgraded Necrophos, we don't find it though. So I'll pass on that. Yeah, I think maybe this this brooch is better on on Necrophos. I beat the odds before. Is anybody even running assassins? This is that scrappy build we were just talking about. Does anybody actually have any assassins? Eh, a couple people like Queen of Pain. So this is interesting they've got I mean we're we're I was gonna say we're running through them, but actually we're gonna lose here. Just barely we couldn't quite get these guys killed off. I thought we were doing alright. But yeah, that's an interesting interesting take on the four scrappy build. They're doing the same thing, they're under leveled compared to everyone else. They're still at six. They're spending a lot of gold on rerolling, that's why their net worth is about twenty lower than everyone else. And you know, they're kind of following that same script that I laid out in my guide the other day. But of course for uh, for the demon hunters rather than for uh, assassins or hunters. I guess demon hunter is kind of like a hunter, right? In any case, I think we're going to level up to 8 here. Uh, this build really does peak at level 8. You know, you want the extra dragon, or the dragon knight. But that also gives us another Heartless, because it's a human. So we're really looking for that. We don't have it yet, but in the meantime, we can throw in another Witch Doctor or Bat Rider to get that. So I'm going to pump up to there, and then still kind of shift everybody back over. Hopefully we can find another eh, another tanky item for the front line, or, or damage item. Just something big. Bracers of Desperation, this is not like the best build for it. But it's still a tier 3 item, I'm still going to take it. It's actually quite strong on something like a 3 star Abaddon or Omni Knight. Because the, the shield is actually really powerful, it does a lot of damage. So we're going to use our free reroll, find the Necrophos, I was really hoping for like a Dragon Knight. Uh, I might even take another reroll to find the Dragon Knight. I don't find it, so I'm not going to drop below 41 here. I'll just put it in a second, I think Witch Doctor is a bit better. I like those stuns, I like getting two two big sets of stuns out there. And then we'll pick up the Omni Knight and, and try not to forget the Omni Knight this time. Okay. Didn't forget. Three star Neck or uh, Venomancer, not Necrophos. <laughs> that would be pretty crazy. Three star Venomancer is gonna be good. I don't think we can beat this. Because Chaos Knight just can't kill that Shadow Fiend. He was one hit away. And he just turned... I don't know, we were going to get it. But <laughs> I was watching that Shadow Fiend and he was just alive for so long. Chaos Knight like, got him to one hit. And then he healed up from a Warlock uh, heal. And then one hit again. And then Chaos Knight turned to throw his Chaos Bolt. It was just... It was bad. But luckily, our backline Luna dealt tons of damage and carried us through that fight. So here's a couple more. Um, I can't keep all of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until I'm going to sell off Abaddon. You know, I'm actually just going to sell off Abaddon to get above 51 and then also have enough bench spaces for everybody, the two Lunas and the Bat Rider. Uh, but I'll wait till interest locks in. Because otherwise I'd like have to buy them after the round started or after the round ended rather. And then I'd have to like make a decision and I might end up selling off the Abaddon anyway because I would be... Um, because I'd be, I'd have one too many bench spots if I didn't find an upgrade. So I decided to just, I would, I thought, I'm probably going to sell off the Abaddon anyway, so might as well just sell them off right now, and get the interest, and clear the bench spot. So that was the logic behind that. If I already had the interest, I would probably just do what I said, I would just wait till the end of the round, and if I, um, 
if I had enough bench spots, obviously I just wouldn't sell off anything. But we were in that unique situation where that made sense. Okay, so there's a Dragon Knight. Um, I don't really have a spot for it, though. Um, I think I'm going to sell off the Omni Knight just to clear a spot. Because I'm furthest away from him, and I think Chaos Knight and Luna are a bit higher impact at 3-star than, than the Omni Knight, rather. And I put him kind of behind because he's a lot less tanky than our other frontliners, and I kind of want him to, to walk up like that. But that's awesome, because now, now that completes our Heartless buff and our 6 Knight buff, so now our build is really strong. This is really, really powerful here. This is why uh, Fall from Grace, this item is particularly good in Knights, because two of the uh, 6 Knights, Omni Knight and Dragon Knight, trigger it, and then Abaddon has already won himself, and so it's very natural to, to pick that up and get a higher tier of that buff. Oh, I couldn't get that guy in time. I thought I got the Abaddon in time. I thought I did. Any case, um, yeah, let's just reroll a couple times here, try to find something to 3-star, or at least something to combine. It's another Dragon Knight and another Omni Knight. So I'll wait until end of this round to, to combine those here, or to buy them, and try not to miss it again. I really thought I got that Abaddon. Oh well, we probably would have sold it off anyway for bench space. Aha, you activated my trap card. They they pulled Necrophos into the team so that his ability hits everybody on their team. Uh, they still might get us, though. Nah, they're not. Luna's still alive. If Luna had died to that, it was, she was really close to dying. If Luna had died to that, maybe they could have got us. Alright, so one another creep round coming up here. Really want, like, a Mask of Madness for the Luna. That would be ideal, or I guess we could potentially get uh, tier 4 items. Ugh, double Abaddon, really? I don't have space for any of these. Hmm. I think I just gotta ditch these Omni Knights. Because I think Luna's a higher, the higher impact 3-star uh, unit rather than Omni Knight. Abaddon three stars really good, so I'm I'm gonna buy them at the end of the round here, and really just hoping we can. I might just like reroll a whole lot trying to find these upgrades rather than try to get to level nine. I think that's been my downfall in previous times I've tried to play knights. Has been I try to get to level nine, and it's like bad because you get the dragon upgrade and you think oh sweet I get dragons, but that comes at a big cost. That costs like forty gold. Uh, or 35 gold here and that is just a whole lot to to not be spending on rerolls to not be finding those three star units and getting like two more things to three star is almost certainly better than just getting the dragon buff so here we're gonna battle fury i think that's exactly what we want for that chaos knight that was one i mentioned earlier is one of the ideal items on chaos knight so I think we're just going to reroll a lot here on this turn. Hopefully we can find some something to 3-star and clear up a bench space. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Well, that that worked easier than I thought. Worked a lot easier than I thought. Got a 3-star Witch Doctor. Um, honestly, I think I'm going to just like move Witch Doctor up here, give him the Bracers of Desperation, and just like... Let him tank some aggro here by putting him kind of closer to the front. And then hopefully you can just get two casks off relatively quick. And that'll be like massive amounts of lockdown. And good healing because of the um, the Warlock ability. He didn't get dropped to 30%. Oh, that's unfortunate. This is a three-star ogre though with a BKB. Uh, well, luckily BKB wore off right in time for another cast. I don't have enough to be. Oh my goodness. No! Look at how big these guys are! <laughs> Look at how big! <laughs> that ogre! <laughs> wow. You know, I was saying there's multiple people going for this brawny bloodbound build, and well, that's what happens when it works, right? Apparently. 
in any case, we're still going to keep rerolling here. We still want to find these three-star units. Not three-star Necrophos. That's, that's a little silly. A little absurd. Try to get that. Alright, so I'm... I'm at a good stopping point here. We got one of our upgrades, the Bat Rider. And... Yeah, I think we'll just sit here for another turn. It's unfortunate Witch Doctor got pulled by the... The Pudge, it actually kept him above 30% until like the very end, so he didn't get to get a second cask off. Whereas I would much rather prefer him him stay where he was so that he took more damage. The Pudge actually like saved him, but that actually hurt me quite a bit. Because he was intended to he was intended to die quickly. Alright, beating up the other other knights player, the person right in front of us today. Does that move us into first place? Yeah. Currently first, even though we've got a worse record. All right, let's get two more Lunas, one more Dragon Knight. Still gonna just keep rerolling here. There's the Dragon Knight. Okay, um, does it make sense next round to level up? I. I think because we already have a couple three stars, and now we're like four rounds closer, so we've um, so it'll cost us just thirty gold to level rather than thirty five on round twenty five. Um, and we got the two star dragon knight, so that means that the payoff for adding a dragon is obviously much higher when you have a two star as opposed to just a one star dra dragon knight. Excuse me. Um. So I kind of like, kind of like the idea. Leveling up here. Oh, Witch Doctor, did you really throw your cask at this Queen of Pain who is off on her own? <sighs> Silly Witch Doctor. Alright, yeah, you know what? I'm going to level up here. Even if he threw it forward, I don't think we win that fight. But maybe we take a little bit less damage. So that was the Primordial build that has, what, three three stars? That's that's pretty strong. So we're going to use our free reroll. I'm just looking for any dragon. I don't find it, so well, the second Chaos Knight's still probably a good a good addition. I'm gonna put Chaos Knight back in the spot here so he can kinda hopefully pick up any assassins that are running coming into a back line, because I think our front line's very secure. I don't I don't think he I don't think it'll be that bad if he takes a while to get involved. Oh, oh, that's the Ogre Magi. This is the three-star Ogre Magi with all the Bloodbound stuff. Big-time contract on a three-star axe. <laughs> Luckily, after the BKB wears off, they are super weak. And they just fall apart. Got them. <laughs> yeah, after that BKB wears off, that Ogre Magi is not nearly as scary. Because he can just be stunned and then... He doesn't actually have any defensive capabilities. He's just like, he doesn't have bonus armor for being a warrior, or he doesn't have a knight bonus. He doesn't have any kind of defense. He doesn't have like a chainmail or a vanguard or anything like that. So so once this once this immunity falls off, they get stunned, and then he gets burned down really quickly, and that's stun. Anybody still have assassins? It's just against this primordial build that I'm really putting this uh, Chaos Knight in the back against. It's a creep round, so. I don't think our position matters against this creep round. I'm just trying to scout out and wonder, is it worth it to kind of hedge against that Assassin's build? Well, they're the only ones I lost to. Or that I think I'm consistently losing to. So I think it makes sense to kind of hedge and say, okay, well, this is the only person I'm losing to, so let's, let's avoid losing to them by putting a good single target DPS in the back to hopefully pick up and kill the Queen of Pain when she jumps back there. Queen of Pain and Viper. All right, still looking for any dragon. I think a dragon. We probably just replaced the Chaos Knight with the dragon. Ooh, Refresher Orb or Daedalus. Um, I think Daedalus. I already have like a fake Refresher Orb on Witch Doctor, and that's who it would go on. I would just put the that on. Um, I would just put that on Witch Doctor. Trying to find a dragon. I 
And end of the knights, of course. All right, we'll, we'll sit here on 20 gold. I don't want to reroll too much because we're not that low on life. I don't need to be that aggressive. I just hoping to find a dragon since we did find the Daedalus on Dragon Knight, which I guess since he's not transforming, it probably should have gone on Luna first. Oh well. She still has a really good item. And Dragon Knight's not that bad with a Daedalus. He's not the greatest, though. He might come back to bite us. Yeah, we get this win. Ooh, a little close. I definitely should make that swap. Uh, that would definitely have increased our damage output. Putting the Daedalus on Luna. Daedalus on Luna, Sacred Relic on... Uh, maybe the Bat Rider, actually. He's, he stays around for quite a while. Another Chaos Knight. There's a Puck as well. Um, gonna reroll a couple times here, see if I can find a combination. Otherwise I have to sell something off. Uh, you don't know. I'm just gonna sell off the puck. Eh, I don't care. I'd rather keep my progress towards three stars on on all my units because, like, look how close I am. I'm one away from Luna, one away from Abaddon, two away from Chaos Knight, two away from Omni Knight, one away from Abaddon because I have this one. I think I'd rather just keep the progress towards all of them rather than than use the dragon here. Maybe that's wrong, but that's what I'm doing. This Witch Doctor is not um, not actually doing his like Refresher Orb duty job. He's like the last one to die, despite being in a relatively exposed spot. Um, I, don't, I think it does move him up to here, right? I think so. And let's just find one of these three stars. Buy the puck again to keep that option open. I'm literally one away from so many three stars. You gotta be kidding me. What? One away from every knight three star. Ugh. Wow. One away from Omni Knight, one away from Chaos Knight, Luna, and Abaddon. And I just ran out of gold. Unreasonable. That's that's really bad. We're gonna lose this fight too. Whereas if we had like any of these to three star, maybe we could win. I probably should have kept Chaos Knight more than like Omni Knight. Probably should have because he would be higher impact with the the cleave. And I think I'm supposed to like shift over to this side, perhaps, to to try to counteract. Um, Oh, and the assassins are gone, so I don't need to worry about uh, about the assassin build here. Can move Chaos Knight up a little bit. Yeah, I think we're supposed to move up forwards so that Necrophos is actually like involved in the fight. He doesn't just stand in the back and just not heal anybody. Like here, he actually hits everybody with his heal. Whereas before, he was like he's like literally in the square down here. That wasn't helping. Now they've got a three-star Luna. Oh. This is so frustrating that we were one away from everything. It's not enough bench space. Well, it'll be a night, a night on night battle here for first. We've got an Aegis, so we don't need to worry too much. We can kind of take it slow here for a round or two. It's a creep round, so just kind of spread out a bit. So close to everything. They're trying to get a three star Dragon Knight. God. <laughs> I'm trying to get three star on everybody else, and they're trying to get three star Dragon Knight. Yeah, I probably should have kept the Chaos Knights over the, these Omnis. Omni will be good to get, but Chaos Knight would also be really good. 
Am I gonna lose this creep round? I think I do. <laughs> of course. I thought we were spread out enough. But I didn't realize Chaos Knight was gonna get one shot before he got his... Both the Chaos Knights got one shot before they got their toss... Uh, before they got their Chaos Bolt off. Oh well. Okay, Octarine Essence? Uh, I like that. I like that actually on Witch Doctor, and then we move Bracers over to like Abaddon. And then we gotta reroll. There's the Luna, thank god. Any dragon. Actually, maybe this uh, Bracers is better on Dragon Knight. Get a second Breath of Fire off. Reduce their damage by even more. Witch Doctor just barely did not survive long enough to get a second one off. Yeah. All right, so this is gonna pop our Aegis. And then we gotta hope we can we can find something here. Just need to win one fight. Oh, they got expanded roster. That was the item they got. We got an Octarine Essence, and they got an expanded roster. One of these items is better than the other. Control Warlord. Uh, no. We're gonna pick, pick up Viper. Let's get the Dragon Knight in here. Um, maybe I shouldn't be this stacked be a bit more spread like that. So my Dragonite doesn't get hit by their cleave. Oh, Dragonite probably should have got the... Oh, no, I'm fine with him having bracers. Eh, not good enough. Ugh. Yeah, this is... This is just frustrating that we were so... We literally were one away from all four of these knights being the three star. And then in the end, we only got one of them, the three star. Uh, and then losing to the dragon didn't help either. But knights are still really good. Um, I think if we found those things to three star, I think we win that game. But uh, did not work out that way. I think our we had basically the same build they had. They had the two star viper. We had essentially the same type of build, and I think this is the correct way to be to be playing knights at the moment. It's really strong. And definitely uh, Fall from Grace helps a lot too. But yeah, they had Smuggler and Expanded Roster. That that put them over the top against us. So, oh well. Good stuff. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, make sure you like and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.